And welcome back. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a very cool creation of mine. This is an electronic, non-lethal rodent trap that can also be used to catch other little creatures. Now before I get started, I just wanted to remind my subscribers that in order to be notified each time I upload a video to my channel, you need to click that notification bell, which is located just beneath the video player window to the right of the subscribe button. If you're not already a subscriber, please consider subscribing to my channel and also clicking that notification bell. Okay, now at first glance you can see this looks like a typical electronic lethal trap and that's exactly what it was. I took the electronic part, pulled it all out, which was inside of here originally, and when I removed that circuit, I put together my own circuit so I can use this as a non-lethal trap. Now how the original non-lethal trap worked, it did not have this door of course, this was all modifications that I did along with these brass channels. Inside there are metal plates and you can see very clearly what it looks like in this image right here. There are three separate plates, a smaller one at the entrance, a larger in the middle, and a small one at the end where the bait would be placed. When the rodent entered, the feet would touch here and the center plate and that would turn the circuit on to get it ready to deliver the lethal shock when it made contact with the middle plate and the plate at the very end where the bait was located. I no longer use the first plate but I still use the large middle plate and the plate at the very end. The way this trap works, the middle plate and the end plate is going to be used to sense the rodent. And what I mean by that, when the rodent stands on the middle plate and either eats off the end plate or puts its foot down on the end plate, a very small amount of current is going to flow through the rodent, triggering the circuit. When the circuit is triggered, right over here, this plunger on the solenoid is going to pull in, and then when it does, the door is going to fall down. This hole over here is going to line up right with the solenoid when the door is in the down position, and then when it does go into the down position, like this, the magnet is going to line up with the reed switch. When that happens, it disconnects all power from the solenoid, allowing the solenoid's plunger to extend once again into the hole, locking the door. So without this, the plunger would stay in, not locking the door. Now on this side, you can see right over here, all right, that's where the switch is, turns the alarm on and off. So at the same time when the door falls down and the plunger re-extends, this is going to be activated right there, letting you know that the rodent has been captured. The very bottom edge here has been rounded off. It's not sharp. It's not like a guillotine coming down. And on the very bottom, you can see I left about a 3 16 of an inch space. And the purpose of that is just in case the mouse or rat has a very long tail, the tail can still stick out and have the door go down and lock. It's a piezo buzzer. It's going to come on, indicating that the circuit has been tripped and the door is down and there should be a rodent inside. I added a metal screen, a silicone sealer, holding it in front, just in case the rodent decides to try to chew his way out through these openings in the plastic. The really great thing about this trap, it draws extremely low current on standby. You can leave it running for about two weeks with no problem, and the sensitivity is excellent. I'm now going to show you the schematic, just in case you decide to make one of these yourself. Okay, this is the schematic right here. After I go over the schematic, I'm going to give you a quick look at the inside, showing all the connections that I made, and then I'm going to give you a quick demonstration to show you how well this works. Power supply is 6 volts, 4C batteries. Positive goes over to the power switch. When the switch is closed, it turns on the power indicating LED, which is red. Water clear red. In order to limit the current through this LED to help preserve battery life, I use a 7.5K resistor, quarter of a watt, connects to the negative rail. The negative rail here connects to one of the sensor plates. The positive rail carries over to the piezo alarm or buzzer connected to the positive side. Keep in mind this has a built-in oscillator 
If you do not have an oscillator built into it, when you apply power, it's going to do absolutely nothing. This one here I think was a 5 volt alarm. You can use ones that are designed up to 12, they'll also work. After that alarm, it goes to the momentary door switch, normally open, which is the one on top of the unit that I showed you. When the door goes down, it pushes the switch closed, turning on the alarm. Other side of the switch goes to a 100 ohm quarter watt resistor. The purpose of that is to reduce the output of this alarm so it's not as loud. Now if you go to the positive rail over here, it goes all the way over to this transistor which is an MPSA64. That's a very high gain PNP transistor. And to further increase the gain of this transistor, I connected it in Darlington configuration with a BC557, another PNP. From this point here, the positive rail comes all the way around and it goes to one side of the 5 volt relay, which is a Wabash 1115-11-1. That goes to the contacts that's going to be opened and closed. So it's normally open with no current applied. Current is applied to the relay coil and it's going to pull this closed, closing the circuit. So that side comes around and then the other side goes to the solenoid which is mounted on top of the unit that locks the door and holds it open. That's a JF0826B 6 volt solenoid. The other side of the solenoid connects to the negative rail. Now if you look over here, the two collectors are tied together on the transistors and they go around and they tie into this whole side of the relay coil. You have a 1N4148 diode. That's only there to protect the rest of the circuitry from a high voltage spike when power is disconnected from this relay coil. You're going to have a collapsing magnetic field which can cause damage to the transistors. This is going to prevent that. And in order to keep that door open long enough in case a very short pulse was sent, I put a 330 microfarad 25 volt electrolytic capacitor across that coil so it gives that door more time to fall down and lock. After this connection right here, positive rail comes around to a 7.5K quarter watt resistor and that leads into the door reed switch, the glass tube. You can see the contacts. Over here is a neodymium magnet. You choose one the right length and you place it close enough so that when the door goes down, this side here gets pulled this way against the other contact closing the circuit. The base of the transistors come around and connect to the position right here just before this 15K quarter watt resistor where it ties to the other sensor plate. Okay, now let's take a look at some current ratings. Over here you can see standby current is only 0.65 milliamps or 650 microamps. So with the door open, waiting for a rodent to enter to trip the circuit, you could leave it alone for a week, two weeks with no problem. The battery will not drain down. Once the circuit's tripped, it's going to have a pulse sent to the solenoid to close the door, and that's right around 800 milliamps, but it's only going to be for about a half of a second. And then once the door is down, the circuit's going to be drawing 15 milliamps, which is very low, and that 15 milliamps goes off when you turn off the switch. The door will remain locked until you carry it outside, pull the plunger, lift the door up to let the rodent out. Now let's take a look at a few images from the inside of the unit. Okay, let me chase the lizard into the trap. And you see the door is locked. This was here just to keep the lizard from running between the side of the trap. Okay, let's let him out. He should. There he is. They ran towards me.
I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to rate thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.